if you shoot S-Log3 on a Sony camera, well, this is your lucky day because I'm gonna teach you how to color grade those exact type of shots. And real quick, if you want to learn more about color grading S-Log3, we have a course that's available right here. Make sure to check it out because it gets into a little more detail than we're going to today. Shaboom. All right, so here we have a clip. This is shot in S-Log3 Cine on a A7C, and a couple things to notice right off the bat. One is everything is really gray and kind of washed out. That's because of the S-Log3. Another thing is things are pretty bright. It's usually a good idea to shoot S-Log3 just a little bit brighter because the image ends up a little bit cleaner if you shoot it a little bit brighter and then darken it a bit in post. So how shall we do this? Well, in Resolve 18, the easiest way to do this is to start with a color transform. We can do that a bunch of different ways. The way that I like to do it is by using a color transform effect. So if we go up to the effects and if we scroll down to color space transform, I can drag this onto a node. And what this is going to do is take our S-Log3 footage and convert it to Rec. 709. So what it's really doing is taking this gray washed out footage and it's making it look good on the screens that we're actually gonna watch it on. To make this happen, we need to set a few settings. Here in the input color space, we're gonna go to S gamut three cine, input gamma, Sony S-Log3, output color space, Rec. 709, output gamma, Rec. 709. We can leave tone mapping, gamut mapping, let's say saturation compression, and we're all done. Now I'll get rid of our effects here. And this node right here is our color space transform. And what I'm gonna do is put this towards the end of our nodes. Everything that I do to this image is gonna happen before that color space transform. The reason for that is we want most of our adjustments here to be as clean as possible, just like we shot this in a different way rather than messed with the colors afterwards. The best way to do that is by adjusting things before this color space transform. So I'll select this node and hit Shift S on the keyboard. That's gonna make a serial node before that node. And I'm just gonna fix things that I don't like. The very first thing is everything's really bright and we kind of already discussed that. So what we can do is take down the brightness of the entire shot with this master wheel under the offset. If I grab this and drag it to the left or just mouse over it and roll down with my scroll wheel, on my mouse. This is gonna give us an image that is gonna look a lot like it would if we just exposed this down a little bit. The difference is we're gonna have a much cleaner image doing it this way than we would have if we actually would have shot this a little darker, which is pretty crazy. So I'll push it down something like that. So here's where we were, pretty bright, and here's where we are now, a little bit darker. So I'll take this node and I'll label it exposure, and I'll make a new node by hitting Alt S. That makes a new serial node. You can also right click and say add node, add serial. This one, we're going to adjust the temperature and saturation. Now you can kind of do these in any order you want. This is just the order that I like. I like to do exposure first because that's gonna make the biggest difference and then uh, temperature and saturation because that's kind of like the second biggest difference. And depending on the shot, you might need to have your colors a little brighter. You might need to warm it up or cool it down depending on your white balance. But what I'm gonna do is just push the saturation up a little bit just so we get a little bit more color in these skin tones. That fire is nice and bright and orange, something like that. I might play with this temperature here, maybe push that a little bit warmer, mm, maybe not. I actually really like the white balance about where it is, and this looks pretty good. So here's where we were, and here's where we are now. Just boosting those colors a little bit. And now let's play this back, make sure we like it in motion as well. Looks pretty good to me. The other thing we might wanna do is add a little bit of style to this, which again, we can do right before the color space transform. So I'll hit Alt S and I'll kind of adjust these a little bit. We'll call this style. And maybe I'll add a little curve here, just a little S curve, just to give this a little bit of contrast, make it pop a little bit, something along those lines. Maybe I even wanna make these shadows a little bit cooler. Great way to do that is in the log wheels here. So I'll click on this little log button here and I can just take the shadows and just push them a little bit cool. The difference between the shadow control and the lift control, if I go really far on the shadows, it's only going to affect the darkest parts without affecting the midtones as much and definitely not affecting the brightest parts. And we can decide how much we want this shadow to affect by using this lower range control right here. If I scroll back and forth on this, I can have it just adjust nothing or I can roll it up and have it just adjust the darkest parts. Of course, this adjustment is just way crazy, but we have a lot of control over what part of the image we actually want that shadow control to mess with. And so maybe we'll leave it about where it is. If 
but I'm just gonna push this a little bit cool and then play with the range a little bit just so we barely notice it coming in. So here's before and here's after with just a little bit of style, makes it look nice and rich. And we have a nice looking shot there. So let's take a look at the before and afters. Here's our ungraded footage. Then we put on the color space transform and under that transform, we mess with the exposure. We adjust the temperature and add a little bit of style. And now we have a really nice looking image and this same process works for anything you shoot in an S-Log3. Of course, you might have to make some more adjustments depending on how you shot it, how you exposed it, how the white balance was set, that kind of thing. But the process is pretty similar. So there's a quick way to color grade your S-Log3 footage. Again, if you wanna learn more about color grading or if you're just like confused by this and you're like, what does any of that mean? Well, I highly recommend checking out our Color Grading S-Log3, the ultimate beginner's guide course. It goes through the basics of color grading in Resolve and then applies that knowledge to S-Log3 footage. And you can download a sample footage and follow along and color grade this entire project with me. It's a pretty good time. So I hope that you had a good time here and that I hope that you just have a great day after this. Stop watching YouTube and go do something, okay? All right? Unless you're gonna watch my videos, then you can keep doing that. That's fine too. No, I'm just kidding. Go, go outside or something.